Peace and blessings, everyone. For those of you who don't know, <clears throat> my name is Rian Boyd, and I'd love to welcome you to this blog titled, This One Thing I Do. It comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14, which reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The one thing that I've decided to do is focus on being a man of God. And the foundational scripture for that decision comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12, which reads, <clears throat> but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, before I go any further, I wanna ask that you hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment box. Also, if you follow me on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you get updates every time new content is uploaded. So we've been talking about three of the six things thus far that the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, instructed Timothy to follow after. We've talked about righteousness. We talked about godliness. We have talked about faith. So we'll continue today talking about following after faith. Now remember, to follow after can be summed up in one word, pursue. Just like a hunter goes after a catch or a prize, we pursue righteousness, we pursue godliness, we pursue faith, we pursue love, we pursue meekness, we pursue, uh, what did I say? We pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. We pursue those things. They don't just fall on us like ripe cherries off of a tree. These are something that we have to actually go after and pursue. So let's talk about the first thing that he instructed us to follow after, which is righteousness. Righteousness comes from the Greek word, dk asune, dk asune. And it means that we follow after the things that are right or the things that God says are right. So we learn that righteousness is not the righteousness that we receive when we become members of the body of Christ, the free gift of righteousness. This is not the righteousness that Paul is talking about here, but this is the righteousness, which is the doing of our faith. It is the doing the things that God says are right, doing the things that God says are right, that doing the things we know that are right, are that are according to righteousness. Those are the things that we do, and those are the things that we pursue here. We've also found out <clears throat> that righteousness, grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life, according to Romans chapter five, verse one. So a man of God pursues righteousness. He does what is right. We also learned about godliness and godliness comes from the Greek word, you say by Yah, you, be, you say by Yah. And this talks about the character of our faith, which impacts our conduct and our conversation. Now, the instruction Paul gave Timothy was to exercise ourselves unto godliness. And the Greek word exercise comes from the Greek word gumnazo, which means to exercise or to train, which means that we train ourselves, we exercise, we practice godliness. And if we look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, it tells us that godliness is profitable unto all things, not only in this life, but also in the life that is to come. So there is profit in following after godliness. And the man of God pursues godliness. He is a man of character. And finally, we, we started talking about last week, following after faith, which comes from the Greek word pistis, pistis. And so we'll continue to talk about that today. But what we've learned so far, that, uh, that faith is our foundation. And according to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, faith is strong enough. It is secure enough to build upon it and add seven things listed in 2 Timothy, which are virtue, which is moral excellence, knowledge, which is an applied knowledge, or an experienced knowledge, <clears throat> temperance, which is also called self-control, patience, which we understand is the ability to endure or endurance, godliness, which is the character of our faith, which impacts our conduct and our conversation, brotherly kindness, which comes from the Greek word Philadelphia, which is a love or an affection for fellow believers or members of the body of Christ, and then love, 
which we learn enhances our faith for Galatians chapter five, verse six tells us that faith works by love. And we'll talk about pursuing love or following after love in a later uh, series. Here are some more reasons why faith is foundational. We know that we cannot live by faith. Habakkuk chapter two, verse four says, the just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter one, verse 17 says, the just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter three, verse 11 says, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 says, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse six tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Also, we know that we walk by faith and not by sight, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And these are reasons why faith is our foundation. Now, this topic has really shaken up my thinking. And when I ask you all to look at the assignment in Hebrews chapter 11 and look at the actions that happen when you see by faith or through faith, look at the actions that happen. It, it caused me to ask myself, are you living by faith? Are the actions that you're seeing in your life actions of faith? And so I wanna ask you the same question. Are you living by faith? Are you living by faith? And so I've been sharing with you 14 scriptures uh, that I believe every believer should know about faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we have to get these scriptures about faith into our life to activate our life of faith and get us on the right track. So let's look at those scriptures real quick. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Habakkuk chapter two, verse four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter one, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter three, verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. James chapter 5, verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And finally, Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 23, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So if you meditate on those scriptures, I also have a document with all of the 14 scriptures listed. If you email me at rion.sings at gmail.com, I'll get a copy of that to you. But if you meditate on those every day, you'll start to see faith come alive in your heart. All right. So today we're going to start talking about the ABCs of faith. These are fundamental questions that we have to answer about faith. So the, the five questions, A, what is faith? B, where does faith come from? C, why is faith important? D, how do you get faith? And E, how does faith work or how do you release your faith? So we're going to take a look at these things, very basic questions that we have to have answered in order for us to really walk by faith, to live by faith, to please God by faith. We have to understand what faith is. So let's take a look at that. What is faith? If we're going to live by faith, if we're going to walk by faith, if we're going to please God, we must 
understand what faith is. Don't you agree? All right. So last week we learned that the Greek word for faith is pistis, pistis. And so I taught that faith is a noun, it is feminine and gender, and faith is always, and I do mean always in the present tense. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, now faith is. We can't operate in faith in the past because it's already gone. We can't operate in faith in the future because it has not yet come. The only time we're able to operate in faith is now. That's why the scripture tells us that when we pray, believe that we receive those things and we shall have them. So when do we, we believe those things? When do we receive those things? When we pray. When do we believe? When we pray. So we operate in faith in the present tense. Got it? All right, so faith according to the Strong's Dictionary, number 4,102, is defined as a conviction of truth of anything of belief. In the New Testament, it is a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and to divine things. Generally, the included idea of trust and holy fervor born of faith and joined with it as relating to God. It is the conviction that God exists and he is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. And relating to Christ, it is a strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God, through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. Faith is also defined as fidelity or faithfulness. And this is talking about the character of one who can be relied upon. And so we know that God is faithful. And so we can put our trust and our confidence in him. Now, I'd like for us to look at Hebrews chapter 11 in a couple of translations, just to get more clarity about faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one in the King James version says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The James Moffat translation says, now faith means that we are confident of what we hope for, convinced of what we do not see. Let me read that again. Now faith is, now faith means we are confident of what we hope for, convinced of what we do not see. And the Amplified Bible says, now faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Let me read that again. That's a mouthful. Now, faith is the assurance, the title the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen. It is the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Now, I say that one good way to really understand what faith is, is to look at what faith is not. First thing that faith is not is faith is not hope. For faith is the evidence of things hoped for, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, correction. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is not hope. Hope means to expect or to hope for. So hope is future tense. It is looking forward to something that you do not have or do not possess. For if you have it, why would you have to hope for it? That's what Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25 speaks about. So the things that we hope for, we wait patiently for them, but we do not have them. And so faith gives substance to our hope or the things that we are hoping for, but faith is not hope, for hope has no substance. So you need hope for your faith to work. So faith gives substance to the things that you hope for, but faith is not hope. So i give you an example. You hope for healing. So the word of God says that by his stripes, we were healed. The word of God says he sent his word and healed us. Word of God says it is medicine and health to all of our flesh. So we hope for healing. And hope will say, God is going to heal me one day, or I believe I'm hoping and I'm praying for healing. Faith says healing is mine and I have it now. Faith gives 
substance to the things that you hope for. So if you listen to people talking and if you hear them say, God is going to heal me, or I'm hoping and I'm praying for healing, then you know that they're talking through the voice of hope and not speaking by faith. All right, so faith is not hope. All right, faith is also not positive thinking or mental assent. Now, don't get me wrong, these things are not bad, but a lot of times mental assent and positive thinking is not based on the word of God. And we know that faith is always based on the word of God. Now, positive thinking and mental assent can be based on or in line with the word of God. But according to Romans chapter 10, verse 10, it's with the heart that man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we know that it's not a mental work. It's not a mental asset, but faith is a work of the heart, not a work of the mind, okay? All right, I want to share with you my definition of faith. This is my definition of faith. Faith is a supernatural force which is expressed or released through words. It has the ability to give substance to the thing that you hope for and when acted upon, brings them into reality or manifestation. Faith is fundamental to the life of the believer. Now, as we go through the basics of faith, you will clearly understand that faith has the power to compel your mouth to speak. And if you will act according to Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 23, when you speak in faith, believing what you say, you will have what you say. So the one thing that you will not be able to ever divorce yourself from or separate yourself from is the fact that the power and the law of faith automatically compels your mouth to move. What you believe, you will speak. You can't deny it. What you believe, you will speak. And a good way to find out is when you get pushed into the corner, when that bill collector call you and ask you where the money is, what you believe will come out of your mouth. If, if you believe lack, then you're gonna be talking lack to that bill collector. What you believe is what you speak. And so what we're gonna have to pay attention to is the words that we say. And we have to learn how to take hold of faith and speak, believe what we speak, believe what we say, and see those things come into manifestation, all right? So faith is not hope and faith is not mental ascent or positive thinking, got it? All right, but faith gives substance to the things that we hope for, all right? And it also compels our mouth to speak. So I hope you have learned something thus far about what faith is. All right, I'm gonna go over a couple more things and then I'm gonna close out for today. <sighs> faith, which is our foundation, is a supernatural force. It can be perceived. It can be uh, recognized. And you'll see many of scripture where it talked about uh, when Jesus recognized their faith or, or the apostles uh, recognized the faith of the man, the lame man that was at the temple, that he had faith to be healed. Faith is recognizable. All right. The fact that you even believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the faith that you have to believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was raised from the dead. The same faith will cause healing to manifest in your body. The same faith will cause finances to come. The same faith will cause provision. The same faith will call every other promise of God to be manifested in your life. Faith works the same in every area of your life. You just need to understand what faith is and how it works. All right, and we're gonna talk about that in this series. So the last thing I wanna say here is Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God has contained within it the faith of God. So as you meditate over the scriptures that I've given you about faith, you'll start to see faith coming into your heart. And Romans chapter 12 tells us that by faith, we understand. So that as, as faith comes, it will give us understanding. And we also pray and ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten our understanding about the things of faith so that we can live 
by faith and be pleasing unto God, that we can walk by faith and not by sight, that we can live by faith. For the Bible tells us in four places that the just shall live by faith. So I hope that you have now received a clearer understanding of what faith is. It is the substance of things hope for. So our faith gives substance to the things that we hope for out of the scriptures of God, out of the promises of God, those things that we hope for, our faith gives substance to those things. And as we speak those things in, in our lives, we will start to see them come into manifestation. So we pull them out of the unseen realm into the seen realm. So faith gives us access into a realm that we do not see with our physical senses. So without operating in faith, we, have, we are blind to the things that are available to us in the realm of the unseen, out of which the things that are seen became into manifestation. So I wanna say finally, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And I hope that you have an understanding of now what faith is. As we continue, we'll talk about where faith comes from, why faith is important, how we get faith or how we release our faith. Those are things that we're gonna be talking about as we talk about the A, B, C's of faith. So I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd from the sheep, of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So I'll see you next week.